in this lecture i am going to show you the derivation of uh, shape function for cst element so first of all what is in by cst element means cst is for constant tri strain triangle okay so it's a triangular element it has three nodes and since it is two dimensional at each node it has two degrees of freedom so at node 1 it has u1 and v1 at node 2 it has u2 and v2 and at node 3 it has u3 and v3 so totally the system has six degrees of freedom so the stiffness matrix size will be six cross six and throughout the triangle the strain is constant at any point so that is why it is called as constant strain triangular element cst element okay so cst element is the most common two dimensional element so when you have a rectangular structure then by drawing a diagonal then you can split this into two cst elements okay so this is how we have to discretize a structure into a number of cst elements okay so the coordinates are denoted in x and y so at uh, node 1 it is x1 and y1 at node 2 x2 y2 and at node 3 it is x3 and y3 then the boundary conditions are at node 1 it may be subjected to fx1 and fx2 just like uh, i mean fy1 just like uh, the truss element and at node 2 it may be subjected to fx2 and fy2 so here also the direction is very important when the force is applied in the opposite direction then we have to consider the opposite direction okay so this is the first two dimensional element we are going to look in the co3 so we'll start the derivation of shape function so first I have considered uh, a trial solution that is u is equal to a1 plus a2x plus a3y since it is two dimensional I have considered y and uh, if only one diamond degrees of freedom is there then we can consider only the u but here we have another degrees of freedom that is v so that's why I have considered the v also but for derivation I am going to consider v and finally we are going to merge the v with the above equation so we can convert this u into a matrix that is u is equal to 1 x y e and a1 a2 and a3 so first we have to find out the values of a1 a2 and a3 and we have to substitute it in the equation to find out the value of u okay we know that at uh, node 1 x is equal to x1 y is equal to y1 so if I substitute x is equal to x1 and y is equal to y1 then I will get u1 is equal to a1 plus a2 in the place of x substitute x1 in the place of y substitute y1. Then similarly at x is equal to x2 u2 is equal to a1 plus a2 x2 plus a3 y2. Then at x is equal to x3 and y is equal to y3 u3 is equal to a1 plus a2 x3 plus a3 y3. So now I am going to convert these three equations into a matrix. So u1, u2, u3 is equal to, in the right side, I have a vector of a1, a2 and a3. So now I will get a matrix of 3 cross 3, that is 1, x1, y1, 1, x2, y2, 1, x3, y3. So I have converted uh, these three equations into a matrix. Now let me consider uh, this as u matrix, this is d matrix and this is a matrix. So this is my u d and a so u is equal to d into a if i want to calculate a then this d will be coming here and uh, that is why i have denoted in inverse so d inverse u so first let me calculate uh, the inverse matrix of d so d inverse is equal to c transverse divided by modulus of d so this c transverse means this is a cofactor matrix of d so we know what is meant by cofactor matrix so first I am going to calculate the cofactor co matrix for the D matrix. So this is my D matrix as I denoted here. So this is my D matrix. So the C11 is uh, you just neglect the first row and first column and uh, the signs are plus, minus, plus, then minus, plus, minus, then minus, I mean plus, minus, plus. Okay. So here first neglect the 1 cross 1. So I will get x2, y2, x3, y3. Then neglect this second row, I mean second column and the first row since it is 2, 1. 
So I'll get minus 1, y1, 1 and y3. Then finally neglect 3 and 3. So I'll get 1, x1, 1, x2. So similarly you just neglect the rows and you can calculate the cofactor matrix. So this is the cofactor matrix and uh, I have to calculate the transpose value. So C transpose is equal to I have converted the rows into column. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to name this as P1, this as P2 and this as P3. So similarly here it is Q1, Q2 and Q3 and R1, R2 and R3. Okay. So I have uh, simplified the matrix. So now I have found out uh, the value of C transfers. So here C transfers divided by modulus of D is there. So I have calculated C transfers. Now I am going to calculate the modulus of D. So it is modulus of 1x1 y1, 1x2 y2 and 1x3 y3. So when you consider a triangular element, then to find out uh, the area of the triangular element, the equation is, so the triangular element is x3. So the equation is 1 by 2, 1 x1 y1, 1 x2 y2, 1 x3 y3. This is the equation for calculating the area of a triangular element. Okay. Then uh, you can equate this. So these two are equal. So A is equal to half is there. So I have multiplied modulus of D with, I mean A with 2. So modulus of D is equal to 2 times the area. So now I can substitute it here. So that is in the equation of C transfers divided by modulus of D. So modulus of D is 1 by 2A and the C transfers value I have substituted it here. Okay. So finally substitute these two in the equation number in this equation. Okay. So in this equation you can substitute it. Fine. Okay. So now this is my A1, A2 and A3. And we know that after calculating a1, a2 and a3, we can substitute it in the first equation. So first equation is u is equal to 1 x y a1, a2, a3. Okay. So I'm going to substitute this matrix in this equation. So I have substituted it. Then I can multiply these two matrices. So this matrix is of size 1 cross 3 and this is of size 3 cross 3. So I will get 1 cross 3. So that is p1 plus q1 into x plus r1 into y divided by 2a. The 2a is there. Similarly, p2 plus q2 into x r2 into y divided by 2a. Similarly, p3 plus q3 into x and r3 into y. And the shape function equation, we know that it is u is equal to n1 u1 n2 u2 plus n3 u3. And u is equal to, you can convert this equation into a matrix. So it is n1 n2 n3 u1, u2, u3. Now you can equate these two equations. So let us consider this as equation A and this is equation number B. So if you equate these two values, then n1, this is my n1 and this is my n2 and this is my n3. So the n1 value is p1 plus q1 into x plus r1 into y divided by 2a. Then n2 is equal to p2 plus q2 into x plus r2 into y divided by 2a. Then n3 is equal to p3 plus q3x plus r3y divided by 2a. So this is the value of n1, n2 and n3. Okay. So these are all the shape function values and here what is p, what is q and what is r is very important. So that is going to be your formula. So this is p1, p2 and p3, q1, q2, q3, r1, r2, r3. So just remember the equations. So the first point is you start with the uh, assumption of trial solution. Then you just, uh, just substitute the boundary conditions. Though, then you convert it as a matrix. Then from the matrix, you just calculate the A1, A2, A3 values. I have calculated it here. Then I have substituted it in the first equation to find out the value of the shape function. Okay. So with the help of this shape function, further we can calculate the strain displacement matrix and the stress strain relationship matrix.